Mr. Schwartz, I, I appreciate you raising concerns related to regulatory arbitrage, and I, and I appreciate you being here, and I can assure, I think, that we would all agree that the intent here is not to provide a creative way for financial services conglomerates to avoid federal oversight. Um, in fact, I believe the bill provides certain safeguards against this possibility by using a number of mechanisms of which you, you, you alluded to. It defines an insurance savings and loan holding company as a savings and loan holding company that holds 75% more of its total assets um, in, an under, in an insurance underwriting company or companies, and it requires 75 percent threshold to be, meet, uh, to be met in the most recent four consecutive quarters. And, and it has to also have been um, a holding, uh, savings and loan holding company to have been registered before July 21, 2010. Now, now, these are some pretty significant safeguards. Are, are you suggesting that these aren't? Yeah, no, I am suggesting they aren't. You're not, and I'm suggesting you're actually not reading the bill correctly. Uh, if you look at uh, page two, I, line I, 23, it's uh -huh. an or. So you suggest so, we so, put an and. So, so just like, well, if you put an and, that would definitely. That would resolve it. That would resolve it. I think it would create other problems because actually several of these companies would no but, but, longer but be. But really, what other problems would it create? I mean, it's not, it's not, an, an, it's not a, a, a less regulatory scheme, as you say. Oh, no, it absolutely is. Of On course. whose part? Well, I don't understand if you're saying it's I don't not understand either because you see there's two regulators there. Right. Wait. Well, well there's three in the Fed and there's one in the state. Yeah, no, but let me, let me try to answer. Just Oh, please me, do. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so the, just let me be very clear. The definition of an insurance savings and loan holding company under the bill allows you to qualify if you meet any one of three criteria. Which are fairly stringent. Which no, also prevent no. The, yes, the, the, the criteria. We're going to go back in time to July to July twenty first, twenty ten. That you own that your top tier savings and loans holding company is an insurance underwriting company can be satisfied and, and, if and, you take your top tier company and you get licensed in one state to sell any insurance, you qualify. And that causes less stringent regulation. Of course, if to you whom? Didn't. What about the state regulator? Uh, Are you demeaning the state regulator by saying they don't require <laughs> stringent regulation? Let me I don't think you do. Uh, well, I think what we're doing is we're allowing the consumers to have the benefit of has what has been probably the most efficient, effective, and cost-effective <laughs> regulatory environment out there, and that's the state. I think it's Your testimony is incorrect. It doesn't require this law to come into effect to allow for less stringent regulation. Just the opposite. Uh, um, I just, I think it's really funny that you're saying there's not stringent regulation, but they're all- No, you said all... it wasn't stringent regulation. You said this bill will lead to less stringent regulation, and I take issue to that. Because the In the is... academic world, yes, but maybe not the in the Fed real world. The Fed is not world. regulating you at the holding company level unless certain- But you're going to regulate them at the state level. Yes, that's less Correct. stringent and that regulation. that is not stringent. State you're level avoiding. is less stringent? <laughs> okay. The best consumer protections we have out there in any type of regulatory environment in this world, and you're saying it's less stringent? The most significant that's closer to the consumer, you're saying is less stringent? C can I answer? Or are you just going to talk, talk to me? You're saying less stringent? No, well, I'll, I'll answer if you want. I think you already have answered. Well, I, I don't. Go ahead. OK, sure. It's less stringent, yes. That's precisely why there's less cost if you, in fact, Avoid the regulation. And less cost is bad? No, it's good, but it also relates to there being less regulation. I mean, I don't understand how you it's can kind of simultaneously say we're reducing the regulatory burden, but we're not reducing regulation. The two go hand you in You're, hand. You already have duplicative regulatory burden that has been in existence since Dodd-Frank. We're trying to remedy that, and that's what this does, and still allows for stringent regulation on behalf of the states. Whether or not it's appropriate, we can debate about that. It does well, reduce the amount of regulation. Okay. It may, it may reduce duplicative. And that's a bad thing? That in and of itself is indicative of why if we have create, a difference It's here. a bad thing. I think we need less regulation when it burdens the consumers. Okay. The, the gentleman's 